Hello everybody, and welcome to another Vintage Cube video. And I've heard some chatter that people think blue isn't as good as it used to be, that people think that, oh, you don't want to draw cards, you want to play threats. Well, we're taking Ancestral Recall. And honestly, I don't think anyone would really uh, disagree with that pick here. Very, very good card. It's funny that it's not over on the left. I feel like usually the best cards are around here, but Enlightened Tutor and Lingering Souls are not quite on the same power level as Ancestral Recall. It's even better because there's not really other blue cards in the pack. I guess Sahili is technically blue, but not that powerful and not a mono blue card. And so it, we're sending the signal that blue is not what you want to be drafting to whoever's to our left, which is great. Um, yep, yeah, we'll just take this. Goes well in every single deck. Okay. I think it's just Misty Rainforest now. Genuine consideration for Caracas. This card is excellent. Yeah, very, very powerful interactive card. As you can see, there's lots of legends. Uh, but yeah, Misty Rainforest is perfect. And now I think I'll just take Rogren Triome. Just set up with a really good mana base. Jess Guy is a good color combination. There's Sacred Foundry, which we could maybe get on the wheel. Um, based on power level, Solitude is super good. And Grim Monolith is also very powerful. I like Brazen Borrower too, but not quite on the same level as these two. But I think it's a pretty easy triome here. This is great. We might be able to wheel the Omnath and be, uh, be four color Omnath, which is one of my favorite archetypes. Um, yeah, but we'll just take the Rogren Triome. Very, very good start. And as usual with the, uh, the Fetchland tri uh, Triome mana base, we now have a really good mana base for four or three colors, but we're typically going to end up being like base blue, white, splashing red, or base red, white, splashing blue, or something like that. Um, we'll see. Now we see an interesting pack. A lot of blue cards. So based on power level, the best card is Snuff Out. Snuff Out's great, but it's not castable off of the Rogren Triome. I think we're not going to take that here. I do like Lorybringer, although it's a little expensive. Um, we could take... I think Factor Fiction is the best of the blue cards. It's kind of redundant with Ancestral Recall. And just like way worse than Ancestral Recall, but it is still a good card. There's also Seacrum Coast. Which is pretty tempting to me, honestly, but I think I'm still going to take the Factor Fiction. This, I don't want to have like five cards that just, that don't impact the board like this. Like I don't want to also now take Thirst for Discovery. But having two uh, two versions of this effect seems pretty good. We're just going to have excellent card draw now. Um, and we can prioritize other stuff like removal that's easier to find later. Now, Council's Judgment and Dam are both really good options. Council's Judgment is a better card in general. Dam is very, very good when it's good. It is also a little bit more likely to come around. I think I'm going to take the Council's Judgment... Close pick. I do really like having access to one board sweeper against creature decks. But Council of Judgment is such a powerful and flexible removal spell. Yeah, I'll take the Council of Judgment and hope the dam comes around. Not super likely, but it could. Okay. There's Toxic Deluge for a board sweeper. Not really what I'm looking for. Black is looking open here. I think we just, yeah, actually no, we definitely take Spellseeker. Um, we already have Ancestral, so that's great. Um, worth noting, if I would known that I would get past Spellseeker, I would have taken the Dam, because that is a board sweeper that you can actually find off of Spellseeker, which is pretty sweet. Winds of Abandon is another card like that that I think we also saw earlier. So hopefully we can wheel either Dam or Winds of Abandon. And then this card will just be great, because it can either find us Ancestor, it can find us like a one mana draw three, or a four mana board sweeper, which is great. It, like in almost all positions, one or, one of those two will be very good. Okay, interesting. Uh, there's Breeding Pool and Jetmere's Garden, both of which help us if we end up being an Omnath deck. I think I'll take the Jetmere's Garden here. Um, eh, mm, no, I'll, I'll take the Breeding Pool. I think an untapped land is a bit better for us. Yeah, close pick, but we'll take the Breeding Pool. Okay, Wrath of God, that's great. Worth noting that we're seeing a lot of green and black while we're trying to be Jeskai. Um, but Wrath of God's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. We can't find it off of Spellseeker, which is too bad, but still. Very, very good pickup. Um, we have Wrath of God and then Wrath of Lands. I think... Hmm. 
It's not any of these black cards. Could be Lingering Souls. I don't really want Hero of Bladehold. I don't really want Voice of Resurgence. Could be Voice of Resurgence, though. No, I'll take the Lingering Souls. None of these are that exciting, though. Um, okay. Savine's Reclamation is good with fetch lands. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not super excited about any of these. I don't really want Showdown of the Skulls when I already have like Ancestral Factor Fiction. We have good card draw already. I'll take the Savine's Reclamation, which could get there. Uh, okay, now I'll take Botanical Sanctum. Winds of Abandoned Wheel, that's great. Very good late pickup. Dan also wheeled. All right, so blue-white is moderately open. I do think black and green are also kind of open. Uh, and we have great fixing for green now. So we may, like, very live for an Oko Splash. I mean, we have better green fixing than anything else at this point. Um, so, yeah, we'll take green cards. Like, none of the green cards we saw there were really the types of green cards we would be looking for, though. Okay. Pretty bad pack here for us. Entomb is the best card by a lot, but we're not an Entomb deck. Based on power level, Fury is the best card. But I, red didn't seem too open. I mean, we got the early Rogren Triumph, but we, got, we saw very little red stuff after that. Nothing else looks that good, though. I mean, we could take Mystical Tutor. Maybe Mystical Tutor is good. I mean, we have, like, being able to find Ancestral Recall or a Board Sweeper is pretty solid. Yeah, I don't think we really are a Fury deck. Like, maybe we get tons of red here, but I think we're more likely to be bent, honestly, and just not even play red, at least based on that pack. And this isn't, like, an easy card to splash, either. Okay, I think I'm actually going to take the Mystical Tutor here. All right, there's Fractured Identity. Can't ask for much better than that. Um, and that also makes the Mystical Tutor pick that much better. Now it can get Card Draw or Board Sweeper or like Fractured Identity, basically. Those are like three very powerful categories of card. Um, Charter Course would be nice. Maybe Chandra. My guess is we'll see more red in this direction since it was cut from the other side, but easy Fractured Identity. Great, great pickup. Okay, now we see Uro, which is pretty nice. Um, we could also take Elspeth. Hmm. Interesting pick. Elspeth is great. Yeah, I'm actually going to take the Elspeth, I think. I know I have some green lands, but I have no green spells, and just being a streamlined blue white deck is pretty tempting. And Elspeth is great. Like, I would take Uro over, like, Treasure Cruise or a mediocre blue white card. But Elspeth is a great blue white card. This is a very good win condition. You need some win conditions in, in this sort of deck. You don't want to just have like only answers and then they take out your one like your one win condition and lose. But Elspeth is very, very good at just closing out the game. Yeah, if Uro comes around, which is possible, we got a lot of late blue green lands. Um, I'll take it and be happy, but I think Elspeth is worth taking um, on the first go around here. Huh. Not much for us here. We could actually take Oliphant. I'm not that into Blade Splicer. Oliphant can find Rogren Triome. Right now, that's the only land it can find. But none of these green cards are great. They're all double green. Yeah, I think I like taking the Oliphant here. Now we see Arid Mesa, which can find Rogren Triome also. Oh, Lorien Revealed. Yeah, let's take Lorien Revealed. That's just better than Arid Mesa here. Now Mystical Tutor can even find a land, which is kind of funny. Okay, a lot of twin stuff going around. Um, I wish the Omnath wheeled, but whoever took the Omnath is taking a lot of the other stuff that I think we might be interested in. Taiga is, like, we're a blue-white deck. Could take this, which would help with a potential green or red splash, which are both still like possible, but we don't have anything for them yet. Um, could also just take Tide Taker as like a 
dude to clog up the board. Yeah, I think it's primarily between Tide Taker and Taiga here. Honestly, as weak as it is, I think I'm going to take Tide Taker for curve purposes. We need some two drops. Okay. Hmm. It's possible we've done this draft poorly. Like, I'm just seeing so much green and black, and we're trying to play, like, all the colors other than that. What's the move here? I think I'm going to take Agatha Soul Cauldron. I really like having Graveyard Hate. Could also take Utopia Sprawl, honestly. Actually, yeah, let's take Utopia Sprawl. That seems great. I think we should just accept we should just accept moving into green more. Take Knight of Autumn here. Odawara is solid, but Knight of Autumn is really nice. Now we take Devoted Druid. Yeah. Yeah, we probably should have done this a while ago, but we're bent. Um, Elvis Reclaimer seems okay, but I think Rex Age is better. Nice, the arrow wield, great. Okay, so I'm happy we made the shift, taking green cards now. And these are like actually good green cards too. A lot of the earlier green cards we were seeing are not the kind of cards we're interested in. Elder Gargroth, also not really the kind of card I'm interested in, but maybe playable. Okay, Oliphant looking kind of funny here. It still only gets Rogren Triome. I'm not going to play it if that's the only thing it gets, but if we get one more red land, then we can do that. Okay, we'll take Finale. Augur of Autumn. Not playing that in the main deck, though. Last pick, Soul Cauldron's great. Um, probably not going to main deck it, but it is nice if we get... Um, or it's nice against graveyard decks. There's a Minsk and Boo. So, uh, yeah, we'll take that. We're playing red again. Red is on the menu. I kind of wish we took that Taiga now, but we have a decent red splash. We have three, four free red horses already. Um, yeah, just a great pickup. Flooded Strand is the second card I would want here. Funny that Time Twister and Time Spiral are together. Uh, but yeah, we'll take the Minskin Boo, and that is excellent. The old Minskin Boo into Colonnade, while being thrilled with both picks. Uh, yeah, pretty easy pickup here. Zytor's Proven Ground is a consideration, but... And also, Snapcaster Mage. Snap looks pretty great here, but pretty easy colonnade. We have an ambitious mana base, to say the least. We need we need all the help we can get. Now we'll take Stomping Ground, which helps a lot with the Minskin Boost Splash. We passed Taiga already. Leyline Binding also looks really good, but I think we gotta take the Taiga here. Or the, <laughs> the worst Taiga. Yeah, there's a chance this comes around, but whoever took Omnath is probably taking this. It's funny that we're like playing an Omnath deck without Omnath, and someone took the Omnath in pack one. Okay. Um, Talisman of Unity looks solid here. Sylvan Library is decent as well. It's, it's a more powerful card, but specifically with this deck and this curve, I think Talisman's probably better. Suspicious Stowaway is also good, so is Inspiring Vantage, but yeah, I think this deck can really use a Talisman. Wow, very tough pick here. Wooded Foothills and Swords of Plowshares are both just exactly the kind of cards we want. There's very few spells that I would take over Fetch Land in this position, but I think Swords of Plowshares is one of the only ones I would do. Yeah, we need some cheap spot removal. We do have Wrath of God and Death. Well, like, we have Board Sweepers, but we don't have any spot removal. We don't have any instant speed removal. I think this is just, like, perfect for the deck. Yeah, sorry, Wood of Foothills. Okay, now we'll pick a Temple Garden, for sure. We just took, uh, yeah, this is like, this is just a worse version of the last pack. This is a strictly worse version, or not strictly worse, but this is a worse version of Swords of Plowshares, and this is a worse version of Wood of Foothills. But um, we'll take the land here, which is good. I mean, we can't find it with Oliphant or Lorien Revealed. That's a little awkward, but still a good piece of fixing. We're kind of base green white at this point, and we also do have Misty Rainforest to fetch it up. Ooh, Path to Exile. Excellent. Yeah, the removal just was significantly bolstered. Um, Interesting pack here. Primeval Titan is good if we can wheel Field of the Dead, which might happen. We could also take Escape to the Wild, which is really strong, but we already have Ancestral, Mystical Tutor to find Ancestral, Fra uh, Factor Fiction. 
maybe we want yet another card like that. But I think I think Primeval Titan looks good. At the very least, it can already find Colonnade and Horizon Canopy. Yeah, close pick, but I think I'll go with the Titan and then hope that the uh, Field of the Dead comes around. Now I'll take Sakura Tribelder, which is great. Love having another two mana dork. Um, Overgrown Tomb is kind of interesting. It gives us Domain if Leyline Binding comes around, but I think Ley it probably won't. We don't really need black mana other than that. I'll take Knight of the Reliquary. I'm not going to play this in less Field of the Dead Wheels, though. Um, all right, I'll take Mystic. I don't know if I'm going to play it, though. Dorks that only add green are quite a bit worse. All right, we'll take Inspiring Vantage. Sure. Now we'll take Corsair of Crufix, but also not a card that I think I'm going to play in the main deck. There's lots of cards on the board here that are reasonable considerations. We'll need to decide which one is the best. Wow. Green is open when Crater Hope Behemoth is going... 45th pick, or 44th pick. Wall of Roots actually looks decent. Okay, so, what do we want to do here? I think we want to play 17 lands if the fixing allows it. 17 lands with Lorien plus Oliphant. So, we need 8 more, so we need 2 cuts at the moment. I don't think we need this many board sweepers, because we're also playing a lot of creatures ourselves now, and we got some spot removal. But we'll still play Diamond Winds of Abandon. Um, I think we could probably cut the Wall of Roots. And then run it like this. Let's see if the, how, if the mana is uh, passable here. So, for white, we have eight white cards, seven blue cards, Nine green and like one to two red. So pretty even, but we are actually heaviest green. Uh, for green, this gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then Oliphant can do it for nine. And Lauren Revealed can for ten. Okay, nice. Um, that's like the minimum. I, I don't want to go lower. How many forests do we have for Utopia Sprawl? Um, Breeding Pool, Forest Forest, Misty, Stomping Ground, Temple Garden, Oliphant, Lauren Revealed, that's enough. I think Utopia Sprawl will be good here. For blue, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's about the minimum I would want for that, but it's acceptable as well. For white, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10. Once again, these two are really pulling their weight. And for red, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So really, all of our colors are solid. I think I will add... Hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, white. So we have a couple double white cards. With Council of Judgment... Winds of Abandon sometimes, damn, Elspeth. I think I'm going to add one more white, one more green, yeah. Um, but this mana base is surprisingly good. I wish we had Field of the Dead, but that's all right. So, do we cut a land, actually, since we do have a lot of mana sources here? Yeah, I kind of like the idea of cutting one planes for Knight of the Reliquary here, which can find Colonnade and also just be a solid threat that ramps us. I think this is okay. So we're playing 16 mana sources, or 16 lands, three or four cards that just add mana, so that's 20, and then also like Lorien Oliphant, even like Mystical Tutor, four Lorien, and a real pinch. Yeah, I think this should be okay. The deck seems sweet. Uh, no Omnath, Omnath. Um, I think we'll be good in a lot of matchups. We don't have counter magic, that's the weakness, but we have. Swords plus Path, and then up to three Board Sweepers. So we'll be very good against creature decks. I think with just, like, ramping into, like, like our card draw, plus ramping into, like, powerful multicolored threats will make us good against mid-range and control. As is often the case with this style of deck, linear combo decks will be our, our toughest matchup because we don't have um, 
We don't have a ton of counter magic, and we don't have a particularly fast clock. We'll have some games where we play Minsk and Boo on turn three, and that's pretty good. But, um, yeah, I think, like, Reanimator and Storm will be probably our toughest matchups. We do have I get the Soul Cauldron in the board for Storm, but hopefully we play against a bunch of, like, mid rangey creature decks and just dominate them. See you in round one. All right, round one on the play against Lancer 0410. Yeah, we can keep this. Very good hand. We can spell seeker for Ancestral Recall. Word in the series that that card is pretty good. So turn one colonnade. Pass. Okay, I think I'm gonna play Sakura Tribe Elder here. I wanna get second blue. It's not Talisman, because I want to use Talisman the same turn we played. Could play Devoted Druid, but this is also just the best against removal. Guarantees us that we'll have access to four mana. Okay, I was terrified of Entomb, but Olafon's fine. Ragavan, huh. So I'm not going to accept this trade here. I'm just going to block and grab an island. Sakura Tribe Elder really putting in some work here. So I would love to draw land and just go for the Ancestral Recall immediately. Nice. Yeah, I'm just going to do all of this main phase, just guarantee that we get it off before they play Orcish Bowmasters or anything like that. This is why blue decks are better than non-blue decks at like fair games. We just draw three lands. Don't love that, but it's fine. Very good position. We have Fractured Identity ready. If they play anything we care about. Basalt Monolith. Do we care about that enough to Fractured Identity? I don't think so. There are some scary things they could do with it. Specifically, I don't want to see um, like a big mind twist. So we should develop our board to the extent that we can. Let's go land, talisman into knight of the reliquary, I think. I'll hold the devoted druid. We don't need that in play necessarily. Um, this is like, it makes us slightly better against a board sweeper. I guess also there's an argument to leaving Spellseeker back to block in case they go removal spell and knight of the reliquary plus dash ragavan. I think I'm pretty happy with that exchange to be honest. No play. That's weird. We also draw nothing. I think I'm going to crack this. Minsk and Boop. That's a good draw. Do we just go for it now? I think so. Alright, that works. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to send in for eight. We'll leave this back to block Ragavan, but I want to pressure them. We could leave back the Knight of the Reliquary to just, like, put some lands into the graveyard and grow it, but I think pressure is better here. They're dead next turn. I have no idea what our opponent's doing. They've done essentially nothing this game. All right. Weird game one, but sure. So we don't really know anything about what our opponent's doing. I do, I bet basically against any deck that plays Swamps, I like bringing in Agatha Soul Cauldron. There's just such a good chance they have graveyard related shenanigans. Um, I'm less impressed by Elder Gargaroth. They're likely to have access to like black removal spells that can just kill it. This is at its best against base red decks, and it's also good against base green decks. But against decks that are playing black and red, I don't, or um, well yeah, black and, black and blue rather. They could have like kill spells or bounce spells that are good against this. Um, Wall of Roots seems potentially better than Devoted Druid. It can't add two mana immediately, but it's a much better blocker for Ragavan, and it's also better against red removal, better against burn spells. 
Corsair of Crufix is a little bit tempting, but we are playing a kind of low land count. I like having Reclamation Sage and Knight of Autumn against a deck of Basalt Monolith. I don't think I need to go up to an, a third board sweeper right now, although that could change when we see more of their deck. Yeah, this seems like a good plan. Do we, I do want to change the mana base since we cut a couple green cards. To bring in a green card and a colorless card, I think it's fine. Submit. Okay. We can keep this hand, I think. It's a little dicey, but two lands on the draw with like good interactive spells, I think that's fine. No turn one Ragavan, good. So Oliphant can get, I actually don't think Oliphant, oh no, it can get green if we want to. But if we get green, we're not getting blue. So do we want to get, which one of these do we want to get? Hmm. We have no blue in our hand. I guess I'll just get Stomping Ground. I think if, like we have more blue in our deck. Or actually no, we even just have more green in our deck. Yeah, let's just take the Stomping Ground. And even draw the island, sure. So we'll get this into play tapped. And then we're ready for either Council Judgment or Knight of the Reliquary next turn. Our opponent is playing Esper this game. Ragavan, game one. Esper control, game two. That's the Kerr Tribe Elder ruined them so much, they couldn't even bear to play red anymore. Basalt Monolith is scary. Do we want to Council of Judgment that or whatever they play off that? Honestly, I'm going to Council of Judgment the Basalt Monolith. That's tempting, but yeah, I think there's an argument to holding this, but there's just a lot of things they could do that are really terrifying off of this. Maybe they just tap out for something we don't care about, but this represents so much mana. And once again, like Mind Twist, our hand is just devastating here. If Minsk can be ready for turn four, always a good place to be. <laughs> That's fine. Sacking Lotus Petal to make another Lotus Petal, basically. Yeah, literally all that did was just replace the Lotus Petal. It just like, I mean, I guess they hit for two, but yeah, that's a fine exchange for us. Do we just go for the Minsk and Boo? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We haven't seen any counter magic. Yeah, I don't think they're playing a lot of that sort of thing. Um, I'll honestly leave this back on defense, preventing against the Ragavan. I don't care that much about the Ragavan, but I do want my Minskin Boo to survive. I would hate to lose the Minskin Boo like Dash Ragavan plus Bolt. Good draw again. Okay, I'm just gonna put counters on this. Now I will attack. Now that it's for seven. Right. Now the reliquary, breeding pool tapped and pass. Okay, this makes more sense. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Tough matchup. I'm happy we brought in Agatha Soul Cauldron, but we'll see if they can do it here. They probably have... Yeah, I mean, if they have um, Underworld Breach, they just win, almost definitely. Yawgmoth's will, a little bit less guaranteed, but still very likely. Now that we know the matchup, we will sideboard a little differently, too, for sure. Maybe I should have known they were Storming. Also, that just sucks. I really did not want to play against Storm in the first round, but... Whatever. We're able to win game one. In hindsight, obviously, wish we'd attacked with the boo. We could have, uh, I mean, it wouldn't change the clock, really. They're dead next turn either way. Yeah, they do have the Yawgmoth's Will. So they have four spells in their graveyard they can cast that 
Puts the Shulman at five, then Brain Freeze would be six. Pretty likely that they can do it here. Well, they have to have two spells they can cast in their hand. Another situation where it's just so funny that they're playing Palantir. I guess they I guess they play it because it, it fills their graveyard. But they're not pressuring our light total at all, so it's never gonna draw cards. But I guess just like scry two and fill up your graveyard each end, end step is like maybe worth it for three mana. Right, they had the Ragavan, of course. So Storm is five. Palantir takes it to six. Palantir put to the six, then they can brain freeze us for 21 cards. That's not enough. They still need two more spells. So they need their, and they don't have that much mana. Because Lion's Eye Diamond is already, like, yeah, Lion's Eye Diamond doesn't work for them at this point. Or if they use it, they have to exile their hand. So that's why Lion's Eye Diamond is so much better with Underworld Breach. Just in general, Underworld Breach is so much better than Yawgmoth's Will. Oh, Tendrils, interesting. So that buys them some time. But they're out of mana. Oh no, they can crack the Lion's Eye Diamond. They have four mana, though, so they can't play Palantir as well. Palantir is good with. Well, I guess maybe Palantir is better if they're playing um, Tendrils of Agony too. But they can Brain Freeze us for seven, so we'll have five cards left. We have five turns to win. Shouldn't be too hard with um with our current hand. This Knight of the Reliquary is going to become huge. <laughs> Okay, yep, cracking their thing, brain freezing me for 21 cards. Okay, we have 19 power, we can almost kill them. Oh wait, no, we can kill them. Yeah, we can definitely kill them. So let's just go, Winds of Abandon. Then attack for 19, and then we can sacrifice. And we need to make sure not to sacrifice our boo. <laughs> so, if it was a hamster, draw X card. So, we're not going to sacrifice a hamster. Alright, pretty smooth. We're able to dispatch Storm, which in theory should be one of our worst matchups. Um, take it down pretty easily in game, or in match one. See you in match two. All right, we're on a draw for round two, which is too bad. Ooh. I'm going to keep it. Even if we miss our land drop for a turn or two, we can still be developing. We have a lot of mana sources, and then if we draw a land in our first two draws, that's great. Relic of Progenitus is good against Uro, but not good against most of our deck. Okay, I'm going to name Blue with Utopia Sprawl. We do have more blue mana sources than than uh, red sources in our deck, but we have a lot more blue cards. Brawl. We're playing against another Stormy deck. Land. Nice. So we can go Talisman into Sakura Tribe Elder. And we're actually not playing a basic mountain. So Minskin Boot could be a little bit tough to cast this game, but that's okay. We'll just grab our a second blue source with the Sakura Tribe Elder. Okay, so we could kill, yeah, we're just gonna definitely kill the Rex Age, or kill the Coalition Relic with Rex Age. So for the body, I guess preventing one damage here isn't that good, but it was really nice that we were able to block, um, block the Ragavan last match. All right, bye-bye Sakura Tribe Elder. Hello, Knight of Autumn. Still going to use the Rex Age first, though. Yeah. 
the design of one is more versatile. Don't love that. Okay. Just have to pass. We have Path of Exile up in, in case we need it. Good tempo play from the opponent though, for sure. Although, heh, this is one of the only cases where uh, repeal, Reprieve is worse than uh, Remand, because this says whenever you counter you get to loot, and this doesn't counter, so they, they don't get to draw and discard. Small difference, but I've always thought of this as actually strictly better than Remand, but that is a case where it is worse. Alright, I mean, awkward to miss the land drop again, although we kept a one-lander, so we can't be too surprised. Yep. Now they get their loot. Discarding Monastery Mentor, that's interesting. I guess they're low on cards, though, so they don't want to, like, play Mentor, but then have just looted away their ways to trigger it. Interesting decision, a common decision in Magic, but like, when do you crack your Relic for a card versus keeping it around? Here they're keeping it around, which is good against our Uro, but I think I'm actually still happy to see it. Because just like, taking our time, we'll win the long game, I'm, I'm more afraid of them, like, finding threats and playing them. Okay, that is something that will fall to our Council's judgment. Would love to draw a land so we can finally actually take out this Coalition Relic. Oh wait, I should have been more specific. We specifically needed a white land. Um, yeah, I guess that's the that's the argument in favor of going for Night of Autumn first. Kind of interesting. Uh, and then do we play? Do we just not worry about the arrow and just let them get it with the relic? I think at this point they're clearly they don't want. They're gonna like keep the relic around for a bit, so I'm just gonna accept losing the thing. We're going to play this first, though, to play it around Spell Pierce or, or whatever else I could have. So, Council's Judgment. Voting for Gideon, of course. And now we'll play the arrow. You got me. We're, like, it's it's not even that bad of an exchange. Like, we still get to, uh, like, draw a card, like, Uro Cycles. That's why this card's so good, even when they can answer it as like well as you realistically can. It just like gains three in cantrips, and like often ramps, although not in this case. At this point I officially want them to keep the relic around, because we have no other uses of our graveyard. So... Definitely hoping they just tap the relic without exile, without popping it. Ooh, don't love that. We already used our council's judgment. We have fractured identity as a clean answer to that. That's scary. We also can like just sweep the board. It's it's kind of slow, but we do like it's gonna get to a, an impossible loyalty very quickly if it's not already at an impossible loyalty. I think I'm still playing this uh, Knight of Autumn this turn to kill the Relic, which we've, we've tried to kill this Relic so many times. <laughs> Reading Pool, not really what I was looking for either. Oh, yeah. It can float a man here, does not matter. This hand is awkward. Lots of creature removal against Oko, not really where you want to be. Might as well send in the Brawl too. Interesting. Well, we'll trade here. Take three. All 
retro identity off the top. Hmm, that is really good. Spellseeker for Ancestral. Could also get Mystical Tutor to find Fractured Identity, but I think this is better. No, don't count. Oh, it looks like a Dig Through Time, which is not much better for us. Maybe even worse. Although, again, I'm very happy we didn't go for the Mystical Tutor line against this. So that does work. We even find the Mystical Tutor. So let's get the Colonnade into play. This can get untapped Red Source if we draw Minskin Boost out, yeah. Just play this and pass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we will be able to play... Um... Fracture Identity and Dan next turn. Okay, we have Path Dang to enter the Colonnade. So I think we actually take the damage here and then don't play, we don't want to play the um, Dam next turn. We want to save it. We want to hold up Path so that we can, um, yeah, I'm just going to take this damage this turn and then go for Fracture Identity. So attempt this, please work. Oh no, hardcast force of will. Okay, it's maybe good game. Well, no, I think Elspeth could outpace Oko, but it's good. We're not going to be able to deal with Oko now. That was our that was our way to deal with Oko. So hopefully, the animate colonnade. We can path the colonnade. Sure. Do we have any other good answers to this? I don't think so. Yeah, we have a lot better ways to deal with creatures than Planeswalkers. I mean, Colonnade it looks like. A little trick with Colonnade, not super relevant, but it can come up. Because it has Vigilance, you want to wait until, you want to um, take it out before they declare attacks, because if they have to use the Colonnade mana, then they then it's tapped so they don't get to also attack. Whereas with most man lands, you want to wait, especially the blue man lands, you want to wait for them to attack first, so they don't have that extra mana. Because of the Vigilance, you want to do this one before they declare the attacker. People just can't help themselves. They always add mana on this. I guess it's possible they could need mana here, but very unlikely. So we're on the chump block mode, taking four. Then we're gonna crack this fetch line down to three. And I'm gonna get Rogren Trium here, because I do I want red mana and I also kind of want another white source. Minskin Boo? <gasps> Okay, we could actually come back now, I think. So we'll overload Dam. And then we'll play Minskin Boo. And the question is, do we go, do we just not even worry about the Oko or do we, I think I will, act, I will worry about the Oko, they're at 20. It's gonna be hard to race that well. So we'll just make this into a 4-4. Four -four. Oh man, Oko versus Minskin Boo. Showdown of the best Planeswalkers ever printed. These are probably the two best. There's cases, uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor used to be the consensus pick and Liliana the Veil was number two. Those aren't even in consideration anymore. It's like Oko, Minsk and Boo, and then maybe you could throw Ren and Six and or Three Minutes of Fairy in there. Narset two. Damn, we're dead.
Okay, good to know about the Fractured Identity. Their deck is disgustingly good. Um, yeah, similar. Uh, yeah, there's like a more blue-white. Yeah, there, there is, a, is a lot more controlling, whereas ours is more mid-range. Typically, that favors the control deck. So, that sucks. <laughs> um, but, I still think we have a decent shot. The problem is just if they have counter magic and we don't, we need to be ahead on board. We cannot be the reactive player. Let's cut Winds of Abandon. I wish we had more threats to bring in. Like, Courts of Crufix isn't really a threat. I think that is still probably the right move, though. Yeah, I guess we'll run like this. Seems like it's probably a tough matchup, though. I wish we had Field of the Dead. That would be an angle that would be a little tougher for them to interact with. Okay, we can keep this two-lander. So this is getting Breeding Pool. Could even get Basic Island if we care about our life total, but I think getting Breeding Pool is going to be better. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'll get the Breeding Pool. If we lose because of the two life, I'll feel stupid. Not that likely though, their deck is not an aggressive deck. Okay, I wanted to draw a land there, of course. Well, maybe that's not an of course, but it's fine. We'll play this. I think it's grabbing a Plains. And we can um, hopefully draw a land so we can get a Talisman into Knight of the Reliquary next turn. They're representing Counter Magic though. Okay, I'm just gonna play the more expensive one. The remand, or yeah, uh, repeal gets us either way, counterspell gets us either way. Okay, it resolves. Do they have the path to exile? No. It's not like untapping with Knight of the Reliquary is particularly devastating, but it's not bad. Okay. Talisman. Then just pass. Not a good position though. I wanted to be like ahead on board. This is certainly not ahead on board. I mean, technically it might be, but by so little, and they're able to hit land drop still. I think I'm gonna get. Hmm. I'm gonna get Colonnade. That's the land we actually. That's like the only land that actually gives us real value here. Oh, it's so unlikely that that resolves. I think it's honestly too unlikely. It's not even worth going for it. This turn, at least, I would rather wait until they're tapped out or something. So we're going to play Knight of Autumn as a 4-3. Okay, and then do we want to attack with Knight of the Reliquary or wait one more turn? I think it's worth it to take one more turn off to grow it to a 5-5. Five five. Then next turn we can hit for theoretically 13. Oh, that's good against Minsk and Boo. Okay. Yeah, clean two for one. This is gonna be a tough matchup to win. Land. All right, so I think given that they have the Caracas, Elder Gargroth is a better threat. It's really bad against a lot of stuff they could have for sure. But just playing Minsk and Boo does very little. We get to hit for four this turn, but then they'll just bounce it. Fractured Identity. Yeah, just back to back. Very strong two for ones for the opponent. And we have no recourse but the Council's Judgment. Just getting absolutely dominated here. They have six cards. Like what sequence, what, what can we beat here? They have six, they have six spells too, they missed a land drop. 
Hopefully they're hitting us with Colonnade. Oh, Elspeth, or Teferi. Alright. There's a Relic. Don't care too much about that. Hope, we'll see if they untap the Caracas. I think we do need to... We'll go for the Elspeth here. If they have Counterspell, I'll consider conceding. They don't untap Counterspell Mana, but they could have rep uh, Remand. No. Reprieve. Yeah. Yeah, this is maybe our worst matchup, actually. Like, I think we have, well, we have Ancestral Recall. We can uh, overpower control, but their counter magic is pretty devastating. And, like, so our event, so we have basically mana dorks in the place where they have counter spells. And counter spells are just way stronger in most matchups, maybe, but certainly in this one. Like, I think we might be better off against, like, decks where it's more of a race. But the, yeah, maybe they're, they're just better in all ways because counter magic is also in matchups where you need to raise counter magic is typically good too. I guess we probably have a slightly better matchup against like mono green, but it's hard to imagine a way we can win from this position. Minskin Boo is literally a blank. Okay, that's I guess a good draw. Alright, we'll go for the Ancestral. We really only have one line here. Take your time in response, it looks like, yeah. Rockus is tapped now, so we might be able to get one hidden with Minskin Boo. Do they find the counterspell? No, they don't. We don't find a land, though. Okay, I don't think I want to play Rex Age on this Relic of Progenitus when they will just crack it, so we'll pass. They have seven cards. It feels like it's actual 0% that they don't have Fractured Identity here. Or uh, they don't have a counter spell for our Fractured Identity. Do I even want to go for that? No, I'm not going to go for the Mystical Tutor here. It's not not even worth it. If we draw land, we can go Minskin Boo and then end of turn Factor Fiction. Huh. Olafon, do we just cast that? I'm going to pass. They're, they have all of their mana up. There's not really any value in going for anything right now. They're threatening to ultimate with Teferi. Good to know about that card. I think I'll go for a path here. We don't care at all about the cards in our graveyard other than Uro, so just quantity is what matters. They pass. I guess I'll... Yeah, we'll go for Factor Fiction. Yep. And I'll path this.
And I will Mystical Tutor, Tutor for Fractured. And maybe they don't have another counter spell somehow. Yeah, we just have like nothing left in our attack, honestly. <laughs> We're just light on wind conditions. Tough matchup. We can at least stop them from ultimating to Fairy for one more turn, but I think that's just delaying the inevitable. We definitely cannot, um... Yeah, here comes Reprieve. Okay, so we get to attack the Teferi for one. Stop it from ultimating. The Wandering Emperor, all right, you got me. They've established a win condition, they can ultimate the Teferi, which takes out all of our permanents. Um, turns out the unwinnable matchup is unwinnable. <laughs> See you in the finals. All right, back for the finals against RJ, hoping to have a good hand, and we do. I think I'm actually not going to play Utopia Sprawl on turn one here. Well, maybe we should. Yeah, it seems pretty safe. We can just play that on turn one. I guess the one benefit of waiting is we can decide what we want to put, what color we want to make it, because right now we don't have double white and we don't have our first red. I guess I will. Oh, wait. Just a little bit. Like if we draw another double white card or, or Minsk and Boo, that'll make the decision for us, or certainly if we draw land. And there's not like a rush. It's not like we have a three drop we're trying to play on turn two or anything. Interesting sequencing decision. If we knew for sure what color we would do, I would just play it on turn one, because that way we could put both Devoted Druid and Utopia Sprawl into play by turn two. This way we're not going to have the Sprawl down yet. Okay, Botanical Sanctum, there's our... Oh, no, we still... Yeah, still unclear. So we'll play Devoted Druid this turn. And then we can use Utopia Sprawl immediately by shocking this into play and getting the mana right back right on the first turn if we want to. But right now, I guess we could just jam Elder Gargaroth next turn. That seems good, I guess. I mean, we'll see what they're doing over there. Some Jund action. But turn three Elder Gargaroth... Maybe broken. Still TBD on whether we should name white or red. I'm leaning towards white at the moment because in addition to this council judgment, we have colonnade activation. So we have two uses for the second white source already. And we have a lot of double white in our deck. The counterpoint is that we have more white sources in our deck. Well, okay, there we go. So it doesn't matter anymore. Um, so I'm going to play this. I guess I'll name white then, and then this can just get us red later. White. Pretty good turn three. We'll see. Elder Gargoth is one of the most high variance threats because it's so good. Like, if you. Untap with it and attack with it, it's just devastating. Like, it, it's impossible to win combat when your opponent has other Gargroth in play. But it also just cleanly dies to a Doom Blade. Oh, well. We have Council Judgment and Fractured Identity, which beat some things. But if they have Channel Emrakul, we are dead. And there's nothing we could have done about it either. It's the problem without having no Counter Magic and no Discard Spells and no Quick Clock. Like, we have good removal. We can deal with permanence well. Um, that is honestly probably enough to win. Like, well, maybe not. They can Fractured Identity our Gargaroth, and they get it. And then they can kill our Devoted Druid, and fetch and fail to find. Yeah, pretty rough. Was not playing around the turn two mind, or turn three Mind Slaver. Oh, come on. <laughs> the worst draw. So they can use everything except the Council's Judgment. Man, yeah, I don't think Mind Slaver is that good against our deck, but it's devastating here. They actually might have wanted to get a white source so they could burn our path, too.
So they get to immediately then attack with the Gargaroth. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Do we have any plans against that? What is going on? Echo of Eons too? Okay. Agatha Soul Cauldron is probably going to be worthwhile against whatever they're doing. I'm unclear on what they're doing, but... Yeah, I think the Soul Cauldron is worth it. Interesting, they're drawing a the card. So their life total is low. We could potentially get a cheesy win with just two Colonnade hits if they're not careful. Mind Twist for two, so we don't have any more answers. Yeah, that's a pretty solid sequence. I'll take a draw, but there's not much we could rip here. Huh. Sure. So our plan is just draw land land and then win with colonnade. We can't cast Minsk and Boo. They're just top. I mean, if they flashback Echo of Eons, then they're up on mana, but... Oh, they top deck Treasure Cruise. Sure. Yeah, that checks out. Just rip Treasure Cruise off the top and cast it for one mana or two mana. Okay. Good draw, honestly. Just need to hope they're flooded. No attack seems good for us. Mystical Tutor for Ancestral. I think Ancestral is better than Factor Fiction here. Among other things, we can like play stuff we draw off of it immediately. Like if we draw a row, we can just cast it. Unfortunately, we don't have red mana. Came back. Well, I, we would have lost if we named Red with this because we needed the double white for Dam. But it is too bad not to be able to play Minsk and Boo here. But now any land gives us Primeval. Any untapped land gives us Primeval Titan. Although maybe it's even just better to hit them with Colonnade, funnily enough. Oh, that is good for us. Unless they're going to do something crazy this turn, there's just a 0% chance that it's correct to play that when they have like so much more mana than us. Granted, we don't have that many 6 drops, but still, like. If they just play Metamorphose and then pass, like, either Flux Reservoir, interesting. Well, that makes it a little harder to just cheesily burn them out, but we can just jam Primeval Titan and, like, execute a normal game plan, potentially. Sail into the West. Um, I guess I'll draw seven new cards. It's actually kind of close, but I think I will embark. Oh, uh, okay, not terrible. I think the priority is taking out Aetherflux Reservoir. I don't want them to be gaining more life. Maybe they're just really going for it here. Okay, crazy deck. They're like... Yeah, playing in Storm again, I guess. Pretty brutal, play against Storm twice and Blue Eye Control once. I was really hoping to play against Mono Green, Mono Red, Mono White, Black Red mid range, like any of those decks. Blue Red Twin, like we have such good creature removal, but we just didn't play against any matchups where that mattered. All right, you got me. Tough game one. So let's bring in the Soul Cauldron, and let's bring in... Mm, like we can't really play Crater Hoof. We just don't have enough mana. We'll cut the removal again. Bring in, I guess, Corsair. It's not exciting, but... Maybe uh, Augur Bottom is actually strictly better than Corsair, since we don't care about the life gain or the toughness. We might occasionally be able to get a creature off the top. Do we keep swords and path? I'm gonna cut the path. They do a fable. I'll leave the swords in. 
And we can play Elvish Mystic just for a little bit more speed against the deck of Draw Sevens. Yeah. And I don't think we need to change our mana base. We'll just run like this. I guess, actually, maybe we're supposed to cut a Plains for one more Forest. We probably are. Okay. We'll keep it, for sure. Do we want to Mystical Tutor for Ancestral on turn one? I think so. Right. Mystical or like Ancestral is surprisingly bad against them because they have so many draw sevens. Your delay. I don't think they would consider Force of Will on, on this. So yeah, Ancestral Recall. On tap. Alright. We have Knight of Autumn at the ready for next turn if we need it. Otherwise we can play Devoted Druid. They can't turn to channel us. Not the channel would even be that good here. Okay, don't care that much about that. Ooh, that's interesting though. I think we actually still want to play Devoted Druid though because it lets us play Primeval Titan on turn four. Table of the Mirror Breaker, okay. Don't care too much about that. I mean, it's good, of course, but I think we still are on the Primeval Titan plan. And now we can just start unloading our hand next turn. So we'll grab Colonnade and Rogren Triome. And it, it's possible that giving them one more mana helps them a lot here. Um, and they can just suicide their Goblin Shaman into our Primeval Titan, and if they do that, fair enough. But if their plan is just to play a draw seven, in theory we're winning. We obviously have a much better board than they do. Are they just flashing back Echo Vions? No. Mind Twist for three would be fine. Mind Twist plus Draw 7 is hilarious. Like, typically those are not things you want to play together, although maybe it'll work for them. Don't love drawing the land. Let's just send this in for 6. Secretly, they want us to have Primeval Titan because every turn we're just taking two more lands out of our deck and making Brain Freeze better. And against the deck with Draw 7, I'm definitely just putting all my lands into play every turn. So we'll play Planes, play Gargroth, and pass with Pat with Swords of Plowshares up. And we're threatening lethal next turn, I think, um, between our Colonnade and our 12 points of Trample Power. Honestly, I think I'm going to... Swords of Plowshares, the Goblin Shaman at the beginning of combat. And if, if that's our plan, we should have done it on our turn to not add Storm. Yeah, definitely should have done this on our turn, whatever. Yeah, one Storm for free, but they only have two mana, so it's going to be pretty hard for them to combo kill us from here. We're attacking for 16, they can block with Reflection of Kiki Jiki and survive, unless we have mana to Council Judgment and Colonnade, which we do. Okay, so they're just dead, unless they have something really weird here. Unclear what Candelabra of Thanos is for. 
I don't think they're a high tide deck. Maybe they're playing like Mana Flare or something. This name White Council of Judgment, take out the reflection. A lot of permanents in play for turn six. Come on in for 16. And we're going to put two more lands into play and a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, so we win game two. On the draw for game three, makes things harder, of course. I'm tempted to bring in yet more ramp in Wall of Roots just to, like, be explosive and develop the board quickly. What would we cut, though? Maybe Augur Bottoms is just worse than Wall of Roots in this matchup. I think I will... Make this exchange. We're just much heavier on green now that we're trying to like play to the board more. None of this stuff looks good. Like Savine's reclamation doesn't really help. Yeah, let's run it like this. In terms of interaction, we can kill their artifacts and enchantments, and we can exile their graveyard with Agatha's the Soul Cauldron. Oof. The old one lander. I think we gotta ship this. This seems better. Let's keep and put back Wall of Roots. I think one mana dwarf is fine here. So we can grab Jeskai with Misty Rainforest and then Forest gives us all of our colors. We can play Turn 2 Devoted Druid. So next turn we could have five mana Uro cost basically two. we can't so we can't go Uro into Factor Fiction. We're one mana short of that. Coalition Relic, okay. We could go Uro into Reclamation Sage or Night of Autumn, which would be those would be our best draws. Mystical Tutor, interesting. What to do here? A lot of options. Just like clunkily drawing cards seems like a losing proposition in this matchup. Is that an argument for Uro? I guess it is. We'll just develop the board to the extent that we can, anticipating that there's a good chance of um, Echo of Yons here. Other Gargaroth, okay. Don't have enough mana to play that. We'll pass. And we can mystical, mystical Tutor for Fractured Identity end of turn if we think that would be valuable. We don't have Time Walk. It'd be really nice to go Gargaroth into Time Walk. Looks like they're going to Mind Twist our hand, which is honestly great for us. It fills up the graveyard for Uro, and we can still draw Ancestral Recall. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have plenty of mana, but we don't have enough blue necessarily, unless we draw another blue source off of the Ancestral. I'm debating if we want to take Fractured Identity instead, but I think we still want Ancestral. Yeah, once again, don't play Mind Twist if you're playing Draw 7s too. <laughs> I just think that's like not really a good plan. So do we want to just escape Uro or go for the Ancestral Recall? Ancestral is fairly likely to hit us another blue source, and if it doesn't hit us another blue source, it's likely to hit us other spells we can cast, including ways to kill this. So I think I'm going to go for the Ancestral. The odds of us hitting like no relevant spells and no blue lands is really low. 
and then it happened. Um, oh wait, no, we did hit a blue land. Yeah. I'll leave the Gargaroth in the graveyard. I think that I would rather have more threats than more card draw in the deck. So solid turn four, threw a mind twist for our whole hand. Um, unfortunately, we are one mana short of also playing Knight of the Reliquary, which is fine. Oh, I guess earlier I said that we don't care about the cards in our graveyard. That's actually not true. Um, we should just leave lands in the graveyard in general for Knight. Although, also with that being said, they're playing... Um, like, in general, we care. that's what we should leave in the graveyard. But specifically, when we know they're playing multiple draw sevens, then it's probably worth it to, like, just shuffle in our best cards, which in this case is a big dumb 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> Unclear if they're going for the combo or they're just like spinning their wheels a little bit before playing a draw seven. The problem is even though we have tons of resources and we're gaining life and drawing cards and stuff, like that's good at not dying, but it's not necessarily good at winning. We we don't have a fast clock. Yeah, so officially their mind twist helped us significantly. It just let us put a row into play and we still have been able to like use all our mana every turn. Ooh, fast bond is scary. And bottom's good, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. So let's start by swinging with Uro. We are, because we're growing so many cards, they really don't need a big brain freeze to kill us, which I don't love. So let's go Knight of Autumn, kill your Coalition Relic. Yeah, Spellseeker doesn't have anything that helps us here, unfortunately. I think I'm honestly just going to play Gargroth over Primetime. We just don't need the lands. I don't think that helps us. And they're both better than, um, than Elspeth, which is just a slower clock. We just want to kill the next turn. I'm just going to put everything into play. So pretty unlikely that they'll be able to survive next turn. So the question is just can they win this turn? Good chance they can. They have six mana, but they only have a few cards in hand. They're all just like blind cards they drew last turn. They haven't been like sculpting their hand with Demonic Tutor or anything. If they play Salem to the West, I'm definitely going to choose not to draw cards here. I just don't want to have go down to 10 cards in the library for no reason. Yep. It begins. The ball is in their court here. Looks like it sail into the West. Don't embark. Just stay home. Just chill. I think they're embarking. Yeah, their hand was terrible, but they just drew seven new cards. They've they have a lot of mana because of fast bond, right? We can have six. We have effects technically. We can like sack the Sakura Tribe Elder, but zero percent chance that that's relevant here. Spellseeker that can find Brain Freeze, but they don't have enough Storm yet. They need to get to six Storm. I think it's just. Seething, so uh, Seething Song, Sail of the West, Spellseeker. So Brain Freeze gets them to four, but they need two more spells they can cast out of their hand. Also worth noting, they could try to get... Oh, Mana Morphos. Okay, that's... Is there an orb? No! Looks like they got it. Assuming they, I assume they already have the Brain Freeze in their hand if they didn't search for it. So Storm is five, so Storm is about to be six, which is exactly enough to kill us.
So, moral of the story is that Ancestral Recall is actually bad. Yeah, that mills us for 18. All right, well, not exactly the result that I envisioned. I think this deck was great. Um, it was, uh, I mean, yeah, it had a, a lot of the common problems of on that decks, I guess. The strengths are, first of all, perfect mana, basically. We had so many non-basics. Only one fetch land, but still, we are able to support our mana base very well. Um, next strength, the removal. Path to Exile, Swords of Plowshares, Dam, Wrath of God, Winds of Abandon. We're never losing to creature decks. There's so many ways to, like, not only kill them, but also exile them and have redundancy for that. And then Spellseeker can tutor multiple board sweepers. So, that was great. Third strength of the deck, the card draw. Ancestral Recall is the best card draw ever imprinted. We also had Mystical Tutor to find it. We had Factor Fiction. We had Lorien Revealed. We had Uro. Just tons of ways to keep the card flowing. On fourth strength, Great Against Artifacts and Enchantments. Rex Age, Knight of Autumn, um, uh, Council's Judgment. So, all in all, we had tons of... And then also good ramp. We had, like, Devoted Druid, Sakura Tribe Elder, Talisman, Utopia Sprawl. Like, we were doing all of these things really well. The only thing we weren't doing is like playing counter magic pretty much. And so we lost the storm because we couldn't interact with them in ways that mattered. We had some ways to blow up their artifacts and enchantments, but we had no counter magic. We couldn't punish their card draw or anything. Um, and then against blue eye control, they just like also had fractured identity, but could counter our fractured identity. So theirs was the only one that resolved. Um, I do think this deck is good, but it's kind of a weird thing where it's like doing all of these things well, but like, if an opponent is doing one thing really well, it doesn't matter how many things we do kind of well. Um, that might just be like a structural problem of the deck. I, I, like, I don't think there was any clear mispicks or anything. It's not like we passed a bunch of opportunities at Counter Magic. Um, I do think this archetype can be successful. It's kind of a matchup lottery. Um, but just like anytime you face a mid-range deck, you'll win. I said I, th I thought we would be good against control, and I still think we would be good against most control decks. But like... Specifically, like, Fractured Identity, to Fairy Oko, plus a ton of counter magic is pretty tough. Like, if we're able to stick a cheap... Th Maybe the problem is also that our threats weren't cheap. Like, Minsk and Boo, Elspeth are, like, premium threats for sure. But they're not early. So, like, maybe our best bet is just to try to get, like, turn one... Um, turn one Manandork into turn two to Fairy and just, like, stick threats before they can start to stabilize. Hard to say. Either way, I do think this deck is good. I think we trophy probably half the time at least, but specifically, yeah, running in, in a storm twice, sometimes you get vintage cubed. <laughs> what else can I say? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.